Denver, Suns, Nuggets, game four. The MVP is Nikola Jokic, looking to keep the season alive. Second quarter, Jokic working on DeAndre Ayton. That's his move. 18 and 10 in the first half for Jokic. He wasn't yoking around. Then a minute to play in the second. Suns up four. Devin Booker, how good is he? 21 in the first half on his way to 34. Phoenix up eight at the break. Five minutes to go in the third. Chris Paul had an unbelievable game. 37 points, 14 of 19 from the floor. Look at CP3 falling away. Under four to play in the third now. Here's a terrible moment. Jokic had a great year, but this is an awful way for it to end. Over here in frustration, boom. That's just a dirty play. Smacking Cameron Payne there. Flagrant two is the call. Everyone gets in his face, and for easy to understand reasons, take a look. Is he going for the ball? Sure. Is that necessary? Clearly not. Nice moment there as he walks off, but that's how his season would end, because CP3 and company would put it away from there. Chris Paul with 37, and the Suns with a sweep, 125-118. The emotion between the player and the coach, Monty Williams, spectacular. So there's that. Then we get to Nets, Bucks, game four. Game of the day, Giannis and company looking to even up this series. And this would be just a terrible moment in the second quarter. Keep an eye on Kyrie Irving. Watch him go up and then watch him come down right on the foot of Giannis. Take a close look. We'll give you a close look at the ankle here. And that's about as bad as that can get. He would not return the rest of the game. A right ankle sprain. He'd leave the building on crutches. We'll get more from Malika later in the hour. Meanwhile, Milwaukee up five at the break, and they would pull away in the third quarter. Oh, look at Giannis. Going strong off the pass from Drew Holiday. It's a 10-point game. Then it's Chris Middleton. That one beats the buzzer at the third quarter. That's a tough shot. He was great last night. James Harden can only watch. Just over eight minutes left now in the fourth. Bucks up a dozen and just watch Giannis in transition. No one going to stop him. He had 34 and 12. And then watch here. Giannis, he's just sort of running slowly up the floor. And then he's not running so slowly anymore. Throw it up and throw it down, big fella. Again, 34 and 12 for the Greek Freak. Durant, 28 and 13 in the loss. Bucks win it, 107-96. We're tied at two. The Nets are in trouble. We'll cross our fingers and hope that uh, it's, it's better than, than um, you know, I don't know, better than what? Better than uh, missing the next game? Uh, you know, it is tricky with Kev. We, we all got to pitch in. We all got to play together. We got to move the ball. And, and I thought tonight we got a little single-minded, looking for Kevin every time. Puts a little bit too much pressure on him. It makes us a little more predictable, I thought. But it's never going to be easy. It's the playoffs. You know, we're going to face adversity. We got to allow the adversity to make us stronger instead of uh, hanging our heads. And let's get into it here. Jay Williams, the Jay from KJZ, Coast to Coast, ESPN Radio. Jay, I'm going to ask this as directly as I can. If Kyrie Irving and James Harden cannot play the rest of the series, are the Nets done? Yeah, the Bucs should win the series. The Bucs better win the series. And Kevin Durant is one of the most gifted players we have on the planet currently. But when you think about his skill set, him being an elite scorer, the playmaking aspect of it, these are the reasons why you had Kyrie Irving and James Harden on the team, right? Their ability to make plays for other people and KD could just focus on scoring. So now you take Kyrie Irving off the floor and you look at the likes of the way they match up defensively, if that's P.J. Tucker, who's done one hell of a job on KD, but now you can blitz him off all ball screens and you force guys like Joe Harris, you force guys like Blake Griffin, you force guys like Jeff Green, you make those guys beat you. If if you're Coach Bud, if you're the Milwaukee Bucks, without Kyrie Irving and James Harden on the floor, you better win this damn series. All right, so Jay, let me go to the pressure that Harden might feel. I mean, just a couple of years ago, we saw Kevin Durant come back probably too soon, too quickly in the playoffs, and we all saw what wound up happening there when he was in Golden State. How would you describe the pressure you would imagine James Harden is feeling right now to come back and help his team? I, I'm sure Granny James Harden wants to be out there. Would I expect him to play in game five? Yes, I would. Uh, the one issue I have with him doing so as he navigates his hamstring injury is the way your hamstring gets in better shape is by your conditioning. And the one thing James hasn't been able to do is conditioning. So, you know, look, these are nagging injuries that for a guy that moves around as much as James Harden does with the ball, for as much as he's involved in the volume of playmaking that they need him to be involved in coming back on a game five where you feel like they have to win this game at home because if they lose this game and then you go to Milwaukee and that's his first game back, that's a, that's a huge ass for James Harden coming off that time of rest. So, look, if he can come back and be somewhat of himself, I think it gives Brooklyn a chance. 
But look, the, the odds are in the favor of the Milwaukee Bucks, even if James Harden is coming back and feeling somewhat good. That's an injury that plagues you for a long time. It just doesn't go away after a couple of days of rest. All right, so the Nets in all kinds of trouble, clearly. Let me circle back to the Phoenix of it all. Jay, Will, what do you think this means for a player like Chris Paul and his legacy at this stage of his career to have his team where it is and with a real chance, it feels, like getting to the finals? I, I want to say this to you, Greeny. I think Chris Paul's legacy was cemented, in my mind, as one of the greatest point guards we've ever seen to play the game, regardless of the way people in society like to say, well, you're only great when you win championships. It takes a lot of luck and a lot of fortunate things to go your direction to win a championship. Every team that he's played on, if you want to go back to the Clippers, if it was his hand injury, um, you know, Blake Griffin being injured, even when they were up 3-1 with the Rockets, him having an injury, sitting out game six and seven. I think they finally have the health. Chris Paul's legacy, though, as a top-rated point guard of all time is cemented in my mind, regardless of whether he wins a champ or not. I just want to state that because his game speaks for itself, and so does his leadership, Greeny. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.